Welcome to Modern Handgunners. I'm Bob Main from the Handgun World Podcast, and joining me is... Ben Branham from Modern Self-Protection. And we are the Modern Handgunners. So we want to do a quick video here about going to the shooting range for the first time, right? Yeah, it can be scary, it can be daunting. Um, we're not going to talk about the safety stuff. There's a billion videos up about that. Our friends over at Politics and Guns have done a great polite one of one. Oh, polite Society Podcast. I forgot they changed their name. Uh, I can't get the name change, and it was like 10 years ago. Sorry, <laughs> Paul. Uh, he's the one that runs it. Great guy, great people over there, but they did a long series on Guns 101, and a lot of it had to do with the safety using the gun for the first time we're going to talk about going to the range and what you can actually do at the range for the first time and how to get some help too yeah so a lot of people have just purchased guns and they're probably going to the range for the first time and i tell you the range can be an intimidating place the first time you go uh, especially an indoor range it can be loud in there there's a bunch of shooters they send you into a shooting bay which is probably you got six or seven shooters blasting away on your left and another six or seven on your right blasting away and it's noisy and i think a lot of people sometimes get intimidated by that huh yeah and everybody else seems to know what they're doing where they're going and how to do it and you're looking at this thing like uh if you're me i look at I it do? like a yeah, but when I first started, I look at this thing and go, I'm like a monkey doing a math problem. I'm like, what is this and how does it work, you know? Yeah. So you got to get the safety down first. And yeah. I mean, just because I'm redundant and super duper careful on this, treat every gun if it was loaded. Never yeah. point the gun at anything you don't intend to shoot. Keep yeah. your finger straight and off the trigger until you intend to fire and know your target well as beyond. If you can keep all of those four safety rules going, um, you'll never have an accident where you hurt somebody. And that's the big problem. Uh, and then ranges will have a thousand other rules on top of those. And it's hard to figure them all out. I can't remember them all like ever. <laughs> I've been doing this I for 25 either. years now. And I'm like, yeah, they hand me the range rules. And I'm like, sign, whatever, yeah. hand it back to them. And when I have a question, I ask. That is the only thing that you need to do is swallow your pride and ask if you have a question. Hey, can I do this? Is it considered unsafe? Because there are things that the range considers unsafe that I do every day. And no problem. You know, I carry a live gun every day as part of my self-defense plan. And I walk around with it, you know, round in the chamber on my hip. And somehow I got to get that thing off of my hip and onto the bench. So, yeah, is this considered unsafe, isn't it? And a lot of ranges will say drawing from the holster is unsafe. Well, well, okay, so let's talk about safe and unsafe. You, you led us into the next point very nicely there. I'd say if you're a new gun owner and you have just picked up a nice uh, new semi-automatic pistol, um, when you get up to the range bay and you're ready to shoot, a good idea it might be to take your empty magazine and only put one round in the magazine, one only. Then go ahead, put it into your gun, chamber around and fire one shot that's it per per time each time so what do you think of that ben yeah that's a great way to start that's how Explain i always why. i always start people that way so if nothing else you point that gun down range you take that shirt for a shot it goes bang and now the gun is empty so if you do something really stupid, you can't hurt yourself, you can't hurt somebody else. Right. I mean, you could do an unsafe thing like go bang and go, oh my gosh, and, and point the gun at yourself or something. But at least it's unloaded and you're not going to hurt yourself if you point the gun at somebody else or somebody next to you. They're still not going to appreciate it. You might get kicked off the range for it still, but at least you're not going to hurt anybody. And that's the most important thing is that you, uh, as good people, I only shoot bad guys. And I define a bad guy as somebody else that's actively trying to kill somebody else. So Yeah, and let me demonstrate something easy. real quick. I've seen this so many times, Ben. I've seen people uh, first time shooting a gun, and they go like this. They go, bang, okay? That gun, after they shoot it, and then they do this. They go, bang, wow, did you see that nice hit that I just made? And look what they're doing with the gun. They're basically muzzling everybody. And so if it's that slide lock, like you said, and they do something like that, um, they're not going to hurt anybody. And hopefully they won't kick you off for that. But if you did, I mean, it's life. Um, Bob and I get that from advanced students that we teach. They'll do something that they're <laughs> trying to do it and it's working and we've been working with them all day. And finally they just kind of snaps in this advanced technique. They pick up on the shooting and the moving and they're doing it like it's, 
yeah. walking. And then they get so excited, they start jumping up and down. And then they want to t- turn around and tell you all about it with the tell gun you all hand. about it, right? <laughs> so for the that? first, so yeah. So I'd say for your first ten rounds or so, just put one round in there each time, loaded. And I know that's a lot of work, but that's going to help you get used to your gun. What else uh, from a um, from a successful standpoint to keep people from getting intimidated at a public range? What else? Uh, put that put that you... target nice and close, three uh, to five yards. I three. mean, most ranges are going to be fifteen to twenty-five, maybe even fifty yards, and that's a long way with a pistol. Bring it in to three yards, get the biggest target they have, and go ahead and shoot nice and close just so you have some success. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing on that. Uh, some people, they might be like me out there shooting groups where I got the target out there at five or six yards and I'm doing one whole groups. So that's what I'm working on. Or I could have it all the way out at 25 doing headshots. And that's what I'm working on. But I've been doing this for 20 years. I've been practicing for a long time. If you're brand yeah. new, don't worry about it. Bring it in. Figure out how that thing works. Figure out how to actually hit a target. Most of, I mean, every stat that we see and look at, most of your gunfights, if you have to shoot somebody, it's going to be up close. We're talking a room distance to a conversational distance is going to be your your thought. and your. So look at your room. Most rooms, I, I think this one's 10 by 12 that I'm in right now is the size of this bedroom. And it's a decent sized bedroom. You know, so that's 10 feet across. That's... Less, that's a little over three yards. And then the other way is 12, so it's right at four yards. Um, so if we have a gun battle inside this room, the furthest we can be away from each other is four yards. If About we're four yards, yeah. against on the wall. And then your conversations. People are going to try to rob you, and they're going to have a conversation with you. They're going to be in that conversational distance. And so that's going to be even closer. So you're, you're looking at most of your realistic stuff is going to be in there and seven yards at the most once you start separating and making space. So yep. don't worry about that super short distance. You, I want you to have success for, first. And if you're taking a new person out to the range, this is the way you do it. This yeah. is the way I would do it if I'm teaching people. When I'm a professional. Professional. Yeah. Uh, when I take somebody <laughs> to teach them. Is, yeah, one of their brand new, one round at a time in the magazine. We start with the targets super close, and then we get some success going, and really is to figure out the safety and how the gun works. And yeah. if you hit the target, that's awesome. If you don't, we'll work on that as we go. But at three yards, if you just intuitively look at the gun and which way it's pointed, it's pretty easy to hit the target. And speaking of hitting the target, if you don't, if you're having challenges, uh, I'm going to say something some people may not like, but don't start taking advice or asking for instruction from the buddy next to you that came to the range with you. Um, I, I, I think this is a very um, a common occurrence that can sometimes be detrimental. What I want to, an idea I want to float is unload your gun, make sure it's completely unloaded, set it down, go get a range officer, go get somebody from the range uh, some of the ranges have instructors that are working there or even just the safety officer and ask them, hey, can I have five minutes of your time? Can you help me out here just a little bit? I'm getting used to my gun. What do you think? With anything safety, they'll be more than likely to help you um, with some of the teaching stuff. They may or may, may not help you, but it doesn't matter. What matters is that you ask for help and you can ask for help from anybody that works at the range. Um, it's hard to learn from your significant other or the person that came with it's you because difficult. it's so intimidating. I mean, if you, me, and Bob go to the range and we start shooting like a house on fire and you're like, I can't hit the broad side of a barn, and that's how you feel, it looks intimidating to ask for us. And we're just like, well, just put it out there and align the sights and press the trigger. It's easy, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we understand because we actually teach, but a lot of people are just kind of like that. It just came, they just worked on it for years and now it comes as second nature and they're like, I don't understand. You just do it. Just keep doing it. You'll get better at it. And that's super frustrating. So if you ask somebody that can help you, that'll be good. You can also ask a lot of people on the range. I give free time all the time on the range. I'll be at the range. Somebody asks me for help. Sometimes I'll I'll volunteer help. I don't volunteer help very often because people get very mad at that. But if you see a guy that's shooting really well on the range, ask him or her and they're more than likely they will take five minutes and give you some pointers and give you a little bit of help depending on what's going on i mean sometimes if i'm in and out or i'm on my way out and i got to make an appointment no i don't have time but most of the time i make time for people on the range i'm you know i'm paying for range time but i will make time and then most of the time we we're like yeah why don't you come shoot with us and we just have fun so most people are like that and most people will help you out so if you ask for help from the guy that looks like he's shooting the best or the girl you'll probably get 
some good instruction. Yeah. Well, I just want to close this video by saying congratulations. If you just got your first gun, join the club. That's awesome. And uh, now go to the range and practice with it. And just remember some of the things that we talked about in this video. And please subscribe to this channel. Also, if you like what you saw, uh, you can also access a, a video membership we have where, Ben, you and I have put a lot of video from some of our classes that we taught recently on the Shooters Club. Tell them about the Shooters Club. Yeah, so we got over 80 videos over there, and it's instructional. They're about 10 minutes, so about the same length as this one. And they're all about one simple, easy, I don't know, simple, easy, but it's about one technique. And so you can get see the video, see the technique. You can try it at the range. Um, not all of them are going to be safety violations. Some of them will, some of them won't. Depends on what range you're at and what you can do. But if you ask and say, hey, I'm working on this technique, and you ask the range officer, they'll tell you, no, we don't allow that here, or yes, go ahead. And then you can work on it a little bit at a time. But there's a lot of videos, a lot of techniques, and a lot of stuff. And there's some beginner videos, too, about how to draw from a holster, about trigger control. So go over there and check it out at ShootersClubMembers.com. And we'll put a link in the show notes, and also we'll put a link directly to the audio podcast that we do. I do the Handgun World podcast, which you can find at HandgunWorld.com once a week. Ben, tell them about your show. I do the Modern Self-Protection podcast, and I do that about twice a week, one quick tip and one long-form episode. So go check that out at ModernSelfProtection.com. And please remember this video is sponsored by Concealment Solutions. If you need a new holster, you can get 10% discount just because you're watching this channel. And in the show notes below this, there'll be a coupon code that you can use to do that. So that's it, Ben. Um, any last words? Nope. <laughs> All right. Then with that said, thanks for watching, everybody. Modern Handgunners, out. Out.